is testing and there's a there's a sense in india and that the testing capability is in itself limited that we we're a big country and that our ability to test like you know the united states or like the european countries is comparatively limited so how would how would you think about it with a sort of low low level of testing i mean would you it's a great question uh, because uh, take the united states right now it's ramped up to about 150000 tests per day but the consensus amongst experts uh, certainly the epidemiologists is that to really be confident about opening up you have to triple that yep. to 500000 tests a day at least and some are talking uh, of numbers in the millions well uh, i mean just multiply by 4 to get uh, four and a half to get india's population and you're talking about 2 million tests a day if you want to get the level of confidence that you have in the united states and clearly we are nowhere near that i think we are somewhere around 25 30000 tests a day at this point but we have to be clever about uh, opening up which means uh, perhaps do mass testing uh, take um, you know a uh, thousand samples and then uh, check uh, in, in a mass uh we whether there is any sign of the virus in those thousand samples and uh, if you do find that then go deeper into that particular sample and check who it might be but this way i mean these uh, are are um, ways of testing which reduce the burden uh on the test infrastructure and can allow us to uh try and vet much more it's uh it's in some sense uh less intensive uh but it is cleverer we have to be cleverer about the reopening because we simply can't wait till we have that kind of facility there's going to be the the impact of the virus and then after some time there's going to be the impact on the economy a sort of blow back impact that is going to come real impact that is going to come a couple months from now how do you sort of make the balance between fighting the virus right now and fighting the consequences of the virus 3 or 4 months down the line i think there has to be a prioritization because our capacities and our resources are limited uh certainly our financial fiscal resources are more limited than the the west so what we need to do is decide how do we keep this economy together so that when we reopen up it's it's sort of able to walk uh, off the sick bed uh, and uh, and not uh, you know uh, be impaired at that point so uh, most immediately i think uh, keep uh, people uh, you know well and alive uh, uh, food is extremely important uh, reach it to every place uh, places our public distribution system does not go um amartya sen and ban uh, abhijit banji and i have talked about temporary ration cards for example for people who don't have access uh but you know you have to treat this pandemic as a situation which is unprecedented we have to break norms in order to tackle what is needed while at the um, same time keeping in mind that there's an ov- overall uh, budgetary uh, sort of limit there are only so many resources we have what do you think as we can to dr rajan kitna paisa lagega garibon ki madad karne ke liye takriban 65000 crore 65000 aur 65000 crore itna zyada nahi hai hamara gdp 200 lakh crore hai aur usme 65000 crore itna zyada nahi hai to kar sakte hain aur अगर ये गरीबों के लिए है और अगर उनका जिंदगी बचाने के लिए है तो करना चाहिए अभी तो देश संकट में है मगर कोविड के बाद हिंदुस्तान को इस घटना से कोई फायदा भी होगा कोई स्ट्रेटेजिक फायदा होगा दुनिया में कोई बदलाव होंगे जिससे हिंदुस्तान को फायदा होगा या जिस जिनकी हिंदुस्तान एडवांटेज ले सके किस प्रकार से दुनिया बदलेगी आपके मुताबिक यू नो दीस काइंड्स ऑफ इंसिडेंट्स रेयरली हैव 
positive effects for any country, uh, you know, uh, in general. Okay. But there are ways countries can take advantage of them. Okay. And um, what I think we can say is that there will have to be a rethinking of everything in the global economy uh, once we are out of this. If there is opportunity for India, it is in shaping that dialogue, in being more of a leader in that dialogue, because it is not one of the two big warring parties, hmm. but is a big enough country to hear its voice, uh, to have its voice heard in the, in the global economy. In this situation, India can find opportunities uh, for its uh, industry, for its supply chains, but it, most importantly, it can, it can try and mold the dialogue towards one which uh, has greater place for more countries in the global order, uh, a, a multipolar global order rather than a single or a, uh, a bipolar global order. Don't you think there's a sentiment, how important sentiment and trust is to economics? And one of the things I'm finding during this COVID uh, issue is that the real, the real problem is the trust issue. People, people don't quite understand what is going to happen next. And so there is, a, there is fear in the system. Uh, you said, you talked about unemployment. We've got, we had a big high level of unemployment. That's now going to be massive. How do we, how do we think about unemployment going forward? Two, three months from now when the, the impact of this thing actually hits. Well, the numbers are really worrying, right? If you look at CMI and says that, you know, uh, virtually 100 million more people have been put out of work uh, as a result of this, uh, of this COVID, 50 million through unemployment, 60 million through leaving the labor force. Now, you can dispute what the particular survey does or says, uh, but this is the only data we have. Uh, and the numbers are just... Uh, mind-boggling. Um, I think, again, this says we need to open up uh, uh, in a measured way, but as fast as possible, uh, so that people start having jobs. Because we can't, we, we don't have the capacity to support people uh, across the spectrum uh, for too long. And being a poor country, uh, a relatively poor country, uh, people start out with uh, significantly lower reserves. But your, let, let me uh, throw the question back at you. Uh, I mean, uh, we uh, see a lot of, uh, you know, measures in the United States uh, as well as Europe based on the kind of realities on the ground. Uh, you know, the government in India, of course, has a different kind of reality that they're facing. Uh, what, uh, you know, what are the big differences in your view between... Uh, you know, the governing in the in the West uh, and dealing with the reality of life in India. I mean, the scale, first of all, uh, the scale of the problem. And, and at its heart, the financial scale of the problem, uh, the inequality and the nature of the inequality. So uh, things like caste, the way the in, way Indian society is structured is completely different than American society, as you know. And some of the ideas that hold India back are deeply embedded and often hidden. So you have to. So I think there's a lot of sort of social change that is required in India, and a lot of these problems, a lot of these problems uh, are different in different states. The politics of Tamil Nadu, the culture of Tamil Nadu. The language of Tamil Nadu, the way the Tamils think, completely different than the way uh, UPIH think. And so you have to model, you have to model things around them. One blanket solution for the whole of India just will not work. It can't work. So there is in our government, which I think is completely different than the United States. Uh, there is an element in our governance system, in our administration system of control, as opposed to, you know, we have a district collector as opposed to a producer, right? So our idea, is, our idea is always one of control. And I don't think 
people say oh this is since the british i don't think so i think this is historic before the british the the idea governance in india is always about trying to control and i think that's one of the challenges that we are facing now the covid disease cannot be controlled one of the things that sort of annoys me uh, is the level of inequality and this is this has been the case you know in india over the last few decades the level of inequality that you see in india you simply cannot see in the united states i mean and so the the type of things i always look at is how to sort of reduce this inequality because i i think once a system reaches a very high point high level of inequality then it simply stops to work you know i like gandhi ji's line just go to the back of the line and see what's going on at the back of the line this is a this is a very powerful thing for a politician it's underrated but i think that's that's where a lot of the insights uh, come in how would you think about uh, going forward dealing with this inequality you know it's visible in covid also i mean the way india is treating its poor people uh, the way we are treating our poor people migrants versus the way uh, the elite is being treated two completely different ideas two completely different indias and so how do you merge these two indias into one well i uh, i think that uh, you know at the uh, bottom of the pyramid uh, so to speak um we have some ways of uh, making their lives a little better uh but we need to think more carefully about reaching everybody there uh and i think uh, successive governments have worked on food on um healthcare on education and no doubt we can do a better job there but in terms of uh challenges it seems to me that uh there is certainly an administrative challenge in reaching everywhere and making sure that level of living is enhanced but the greater challenge to me lies in the range between the lower middle class and the middle class uh which is where we need uh, in a huge way uh jobs uh good quality jobs so that people are not uh, you know dependent on a sarkari job uh and the comforts that come with it so this is something that i i think we need to work on and uh, this is where i think a tremendous expansion in the economy is absolutely necessary we've seen over the last so many years a progressing progressive decline in our rate of economic growth when in fact we have so many young people entering the labor force so i would say let us not pick uh amongst possibilities but create the opportunity for any kind of area to flourish mm-hmm. if there's a mistake we made in the past we said this is the only way to grow and think of what you know one of the most successful areas we've grown in software and uh and um outsourcing services uh, who would have thought that that would be india's strength And, and it just emerged, and uh, some people even argue that uh, it emerged only because the government didn't pay attention to it. Now, I'm not in that camp, but we need to uh, allow for any possibility and let the enterprise of our people take its step.